Good morning. Uh, this is Sean Slade, uh, live from the uh, Music Marvel Academy here in Rye, Colorado. We are really excited about our presentation today. We've got uh, President and CEO Aaron Garner that's put together a magnificent presentation on the new uh, premiere series of Piano Marvel books. And so here, with no further ado, is Aaron Garner. All right, and this is uh, an exciting seminar for me. I lost my voice, so it's just barely coming back. Um, we're going to go ahead and just jump into it. So let's get started. Share screen. Sean's going to share his screen for me really quick. Share screen. Start, start sharing. All right. We're going to hide. All right, so if all worked well, you're able to see my screen here. Uh, what we're going to do is go through our Premier All-in-One course, which is the new edition for Piano Marble, books one through six. By the way, if you want to get um, advised when we're doing some more webinars or other songs that we release, go ahead and click subscribe to this channel. You'll see our great webinars, new songs that we release, and new tutorials. Also, we have a lot of teachers who ask for our uh, copy of the presentation. If you want to do this for your group, wherever you are, go ahead and just send an email to contact us at pianomarvel.com and we'll send you this a copy of this presentation. Okay, today's, today's webinar is in five parts. The first one we're going to talk about how the combination of the books and the software is a very powerful way to learn piano. Next, we're going to do my favorite part of the webinar, which is samples of our songs that you'll find in here. These are songs that sound great, they look good, they're fun to play, and they're crafted to teach a variety of techniques, allowing you to express true musicality. Part three, we're going to go over how the music theory is tied in. And there's an excellent music theory um, component in these books. Um, a lot of people think theory is really lame and boring, but if you do it right, it's actually really fun and helps you learn music more quickly. And last, we'll teach how to, uh, we're, we're gonna show teachers how to teach with the Piano Marble books, give you some tips and pointers. Um, where to find these books? For 20% off, you can ask your local music retailer or just visit pianomarvel.com. Click on the store link, click on shop for books, and you'll see that 20% off complete set right there. All right, part one. Let's go into this one, how the books can, combined with the software equals powerful and fun learning. Uh, why use the software? Uh, first of all, when you learn systematically and practice smart, you will learn at least eight times faster than if you just go through and start learning music. So we've divided stuff into sections, right hand, left hand, slow, medium, and up to speed so you practice correctly. You get feedback here. You learn the right notes instead of spending a lot of time all week learning wrong notes and it getting ingrained into your fingers. Your automatic progress tracking is huge. The instant feedback you get, the note hinting if you don't know a note, the practice mode, the prepare mode, video lessons that you get, and reports, and then of course the sight reading tests along with tracking your progress with your, your sight reading skills, and a lot more. Now there's a misconception that why wouldn't you have or why would you have a physical copy of the book if the software is so superior? Well, it's not and we have never said that you don't need a book anymore. It is just it's very different learning from a book. So you use a combination of the two to learn optimally. What about page turns for live performance? Of course, the little frog turning the page here. Uh, when you enter a competition, and there are great pieces for competition for students here, you need a physical copy of the book. The score access without a device, say your internet goes down or your um, 
your electricity goes out, or let's say a device isn't even close, it's handy just to pick up a book and open it up. You can write in the book, take notes. We have theory tests that are and writing exercises that actually help with your learning. And it's easy to put a book at an acoustic piano. And of course, reading from a book is just different. I would not rely completely on the computer because then what happens when you do see music on a sheet, you have to train your eyes to read from a book as well. So now we get into the fun part. We are going to give you a tour through some of the cool songs in Piano Marble here. And we hope you pick your next piece. We have some Halloween songs as well, so stay tuned. Here we go. We're going to start backwards. Let's start in book six. We have Flight of the Bumblebee, and I'm just going to start here. Now this is a, a piece that looks incredibly difficult. I just had an eight-year-old learn this piece. Of course, the Chopin's Minute Waltz. We have Arabesque, Everybody Needs. You have Winter Leaves. Let me show you just three duets that you might want to start with uh, a partner or have two students do this. We'll go ahead and start this from the top. Just give you little samples. Now we'll go to, to the B section. One, two, ready, go. Let's go ahead and skip to the C section here. One, two, ready, go. fun piece. Kids love this one. Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Really fun piece. Great arrangement your students will love. Here's a piece called Stump. A very quick learn and up to beat and fun song. One and two and ready, go. Repeat, two, ready, go. Next section. Very fun piece. Everybody needs the fur lease. So we have a lot of these great classics in here. Ina Klein and Nocta Musi, Canon in C. Actually, this is Canon in D. Transposed to C. Fun arrangement. There's some great stuff in that one. This, the famous. Uh, 
I want you to see in the book we have an analysis of this by chords. You can see how this works. I can actually play this whole song. If you take a look, let me get my little pointer here. At this first chord, that's actually the first measure. Second chord is the second measure, third chord. So I'm going to read through this and show you how easy this is. Second chord is the second measure. Mouse one. Third. And then the fourth one. Next measure is measure five, and so forth. Really fun way to learn that song. Let's look at book five, The Earl King. This is a great Halloween piece. Let's see if you want to learn this one. It should take, on average, about five days to learn this. Back to the begin, back to the beginning, and run through it one more time. It's got some fun hand over hand things that make it look really hard, but you can just see it's a five finger pattern here. Same thing in the left hand and the one four and five seven chord. Super easy to learn. Sounds hard. Any song with a star on it. We are going to introduce today our new prepare mode. If you've seen in the software this little prepare button, you notice the prepare mode says that it is coming. October 17th, but today we're going to give you a little preview of what this is going to do. Nightly Tale, everybody needs the medieval sound. Here we have the March Love. Great recital piece. The last rows. I think I want to just start down here and show you. This is a student favorite. Every one of my students want to play this one. So I just have to tell them I only want two people to play it and then I'll let you play it after they're done. Repeat. Anyway, great piece there. Silverlit Night has a star. We're going to demo this a little later. Tarantella. We have a song that's less than 30 seconds. Let's see if I can get through it in time. Did it. Yay. Next song. Siviana. This one has a star. It'll be a special performance today. Hilton Place. We are at the Haunted Mansion one at 7902 Hilton Place. This is a fun one for Halloween. <laughs> fun piece. Ghost Rider, another Halloween piece. I think I'll start this one down here. Yeah, that was supposed to be a 
nice suspension. Spy song, and again, we got the star. We'll come back to that one later. Egyptian rule. Really fun Egyptian piece. Russian dance. Nice piece. Let's go into book four next. We, of course, have Dvorak's New World Symphony. It's a nice little version. Um, you'll recognize this one. Notice this song has the song in F major and then in G major. When I have students do this for a performance, I like putting them back to back so that they actually have this uh, modulation. skip up to the next page so it comes out really good as a recital piece there Carol of the Bells we got a special yellow star we'll show you that one later under the sleepy willow kind of a somber really relaxed piece Exploring book three, Satin Gloves, we'll show you with the star. Then Ryder, a lot of boys like this one because it's rough and tumble. Bear went over the mountains. We've got a lot of um, just standard pieces in our repertoire too. Everybody needs an Irish jig. Really fun arrangement that's easy to play. Arabia is one of my favorites. parts in there. Exploring book two. All right, we have some duets. I'll have Sean join me. We'll have him start on part one. We'll pick up the speed and go to part two. So forth. Notice the teacher accompaniment is down here on the right. Um, crystal figurine, one, two, ready, go. That's a fun, really relaxing piece. And then you have the standard pieces, one, two, ready, go. Nice and easy. We have green sleeves. Go. This can be used as a duet for an older student and a younger student, or a mom and dad, a mom and a child, or dad and a child. And then we have the easy, easy songs. One, two, ready, go. And so forth. Iceman, one, two, ready, go. So forth. Count ten races. One, two, ready, go. So 
So a lot of fun accompaniments that go along with that. Hot cross buns. One, two, ready, go. And Peter, Peter, we'll end on this one. Part one. Part two. All right, we are ready to go ahead and demo our new prepare mode and what it's going to do for you guys. Now, any of those songs that you chose, actually, let's go back. Um, let's see if I can go to our screen here. Our first song, Not a Thousand Years or Let It Go, we're going to go to Siviana. This is one of the students' favorite pieces. You'll want to learn this one. Down here we have prepare mode. And if I play a note, it'll tell me where I'm playing. And I found the right note, but it didn't move on because I have notes in the left hand. If I play them all at the same time, it'll move on. I'm going to start this one over from the top and demo this song. When you play that, make sure it's really musical and exotic. Get that Spanish flair on there. We have next Satin Gloves. This piece has two positions only, but it's a hand crossover piece, so it looks like it's harder to play than it really is. G minor position, C minor position. Next, we have a spy song. I put this one in here because students just love it. They gravitate to this one really fast. It's got some power chords in there and a nice spy theme. Next, we have a lovely melody called Ice Castles. Ice Castle. Thank you. 
We only have two more pieces for you to share today. Carol of the Bells and Silver Let Night. I think Carol of the Bells is still my ultimate favorite. I give this to anybody first grade and on. It's a great arrangement. I think you'll like. Last song of the day, Silver Lit Night. You'll notice probably, let me go back to my presentation. You've noticed that all of these songs are pretty short. Um, with a very few exceptions, each of these songs should take no longer than five days to learn if you use the minced slicing in Piano Marble. Um, if you go, you'll notice how it splits each song up into sections, right hand, left hand, and several different speeds. All you have to do is run through each one of these stars as soon as you're done with the stars, you've mastered this song. You find it by going to launch app now at pianomarble.com. Once you click that, it'll bring you to your login screen. You'll log in, go to the library, and then in the library, just type in the song you want to learn, add it over, drag it into the My Library. You click it to open it, and then you make sure you're set over here to minced, and that's where you find your stars, and you just start earning them. So. That gives us a new problem. Now that you're learning songs so fast, we need more songs. So how do you find songs? We've got a solution for you that we've come up with. If you go into the Piano Marble library here at pianomarble.com and you click on this, this rating thing. Let me go ahead and get my pointer back. Over here I've got a rating. You can sort, you can limit your, your search here, so it's really convenient. Um, if you want a printed copy, we've developed a list that you can have if you want it. Um, I just print this off and have it in my studio for a quick reference of some of the funnest songs. Over here, we've got in that same document, we've got domain, uh, public domain songs, just hundreds of songs like Tarantella by Pazanka and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart K545 and just a great resource. If you want a copy of that, make sure you just send that request to contact us at pianomarvel.com. All right. Hope you enjoyed those songs, but that's not all that's contained in the books. Even though there's great, great songs, there's also a fantastic theory. If you open it up in your table of contents, you look you can see the um, quick reference of a picture where things are introduced, like your chord of rest and your eighth notes, your key, sorry, your note F, your staccato, and your slurs. 
you notice that it has the traditional things in here. Um, I would pay attention as you use the books to these little boxes here because they are crucial for a really good learning. Number one, clap and count out loud. People don't like to do that, but if you start doing that, you're going to be a great pianist and have great rhythm. And then we actually have them write the counts in so they understand mentally what the what the counts are and how they go. Um, you'll notice we don't have a lot of text explanation. Instead, we use just little diagrams that are super easy and intuitive to learn without cluttering up the page. Um, student, follow these through. And then at the end of each section, we have a review where they take a little test and it's a written exam. Then they go and they visit pianomarble.com and take the standard assessment of sight reading and they write their Sasser score in here so they can track that from section to section. They'll also get to do that at every section. So 1B, you'll notice they also take their test again once they're finished with 1B. Um, we'll just skim through a lot of these quickly. Notice how this is something that students don't understand. So we have you follow the directions here to really ingrain what is first and second ending. They have to click on each measure and count the measures and such. Over here, got another review. And then at the end of the book, it takes all your reviews into a comprehensive exam. So you review everything you learned in the entire book. Terms and signs, the grand staff, and then your note test. Why is it important to write down the notes? It really helps in retention. And then, of course, the certificate that you can print off for yourself, sign it, or a teacher can print it off for you. Exploring book two really quickly. I'm just going to skim through this stuff. Uh, one of the things I did want to point out is we introduced something that a lot of books neglect, and that's conducting. So we have them conduct while you play, and then... They, they learn just different conducting patterns, terms and signs, note test, and then book three, I'll show you a couple of things we show here, scale crossing, finger crossing. Uh, we, we like to teach with colors. So colors can really help you identify, oh, this belongs to this, and then the blue belongs to the blue, and we have them do clapping exercises. We use color-coordinated things to teach with a little blurb here on what a blues is. And then the C has four measures, the F has two measures, C. So you can see they're all color-coordinated, making it really easy to learn what a 12-bar blues is and such. And we have our review science test, another certification. Before we do um, something that I came up with for my students that helps. Instead of thinking of where the fingers cross, we think of groups. So you just lay down your th first three notes and then your four, and then the left hand you lay down the group. So you start thinking of scales in groups and blocks instead of um, just finger crossing and when do you cross. Of course, we like to make sure that they understand the rudiments of theory, such as the C, D, E, F chords, plus the Roman numerals, because they're going to see those later on. And then right inside of your music, we like to make sure they start analyzing and seeing what they're playing so they understand their music better, their chord inversions. And we even do exercises where they see patterns and start to recognize shapes of what chords are and what versions. And Circle of Fifths, Exploring Book 5, notice the interval distances with just tons of examples of writing what distances they are, and the interval qualities, whether it's major, minor, perfect, augmented, or diminished. Um, really easy to understand. We have nice charts that make, the, make it even easier. Chord qualities, you can see the major, minor, diminished with lots of exercises. And then we go into the music, and we start putting everything they learned right into the music. They analyze all sorts of things. When you get into book six, Notice we've got a history on the Baroque with composers and what instruments they were using. And then we have a review test where they go in and they answer it and prove that they learned what they did. The classical, we do the same thing. And the romantic, we do the same thing. So this is the end of our 
review on theory. Music theory is awesome. When you do it right, it's actually not boring at all. Part four, how to teach with Piano Marvel. We're going to just quickly skim through this. Um, if you look at number one, sight reading is a really important part in teaching. Read from the books often. Take the sasser often and be creative. Um, motivation. Keep students motivated high for optimal excitement to practice. So this is probably where I spend 90% of my effort teaching is coming up with motivational tactics. You can choose exciting pieces for your students, which we just gave you a bunch of them today. More focus on musicality and magic in music. You see a lot of students playing. You want to make it come alive. So you spend a lot of time on musicality, and that is actually very motivational for a student when they sound good. Innovative games and prize ideas, and rotate these ideas regularly because students get bored with the same prizes and ideas. Always learn new ones. Um, teach students to learn without you. Uh, what's the saying? Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Give a man a, uh, teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's what we want to do as teachers. So practice makes permanent, not perfect. So if you use the mince slicing in Piano Marvel, it goes a long way to develop independence from the teacher. Develop good practice habits, learn new tools all the time. Do the theory reviews and exercises. I cannot stress how important it is to, to write and do the theory and be consistent. Number five, follow the instructions in the book, those little blue boxes that we give you. you it's hard to go wrong if you follow it just to the letter. And then as a teacher, never stop learning. Um, we created a video, if you're interested in it, on our YouTube channel about uh, it's a class that I put on how to teach in a classroom. And we just did a sight reading. Um, you can go in and just, I think you can find that under, Joel, do you remember what title that is? Probably not. Title. Well, if you, we'll maybe send out a follow-up link on that video if you're interested. And then last of all, where to find your books, ask your music dealer or go to pianomarvel.com, reminder. Um, oh, by the way, these are coil bound, so they lay flat on your on your book. High quality paper with brightness, um, just premium quality. You go to the pianomarvel.com, click on store, click on shop for books, and you get your 20% off by buying the whole set. I'd go ahead and order a copy of those for each of your families. If you're a, if you're a teacher, ha definitely have one in your studio and encourage your students to get a set. And then also, if you're just a student listening in on this, go ahead and pick up your set. You'll have these songs. They're, they're great stuff in there. So if you want a reminder, if you want a copy of this presentation and do this at your own Music Teachers Association. Um, feel free to contact us at piano Mar uh, contact us at pianomarble.com, and don't forget to subscribe below. Thanks for joining us on this session, and we will see you next week.